Hello and welcome to Fanfic Review Corner Minicast with Brush and Bones. Moonlight. And today we're going to bring you a very, very special treat. A sweet little one-shot that... This was a fanfic that was suggested to me when I had put out a request for fanfiction to review. The story is My Little Dashi, written by... R.O.B. Kakeran 53. It is a very simple story, but a very good one. Indeed. Very good. Now, we're gonna get into a couple quick little things regarding the um, actual, like, format of the story and such before we go into any details. And we're going to try, keyword being try, to, to be a bit vague, because the story is a very good story. And... Here on the show, we have a tendency to pretty much give lots of spoilers and go in-depth uh, with with how we analyze it. Well, that's... we've mostly been doing one-shots so far, so I'm sure once we get into longer things, we won't spoil them as much. Indeed. But since this is such a short tale, as it is a one sh- another one-shot, uh, we're going to go ahead and try... we're going to try to, to save you from too many spoilers... But there will be spoilers. It is simply inevitable. Hopefully only minor spoilers. Now, the format of the story, of course, it is a one-shot. And um, the entire premise of it is pretty obvious just from the very picture that it has attached to it and the summary that there is. You've all heard of humans in Equestria stories. Well, this is not one of them. Instead, this is a pony in the human world story told from the perspective of the human who discovers the pony as a filly you can probably see where it's going with that and odds are if you look on pony buru often as not you've seen the pictures that this story was based on the human in question is never named in the fic but out of respect to the original author i'm just going to call him rob we'll just call him rob (laughs) <laughs> so it's told from the first person perspective so we're seeing life through the eyes of rob living his normal boring everyday life one at a time in the human world in a dying city he has no parents they've already passed on we're never told whether or not he's we're never given a very clear view as to what his age is but if i were to gauge it i would probably say mid-20s just because that's that seems to be about the average for bronies (laughs) yes it does he seems to sound like a mid 20 year old anyway so that being said we're seeing stuff through his eyes and Aside from doing his work and work and walking home and bumming around the house until he goes to bed, he will just play video games or watch My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Like us all. Like all of us, indeed. <laughs> That's pretty much all I do all day. <laughs> yeah, it seems to what all I do as well. So, that being said, one day something new and interesting happens. Since Gasp. we, you already probably saw it coming, folks. But one day, as he's walking down the road, he spies a box, and inside this box is a little Wuna. Wait, no, no, it's not Wuna. Dash, um... you silly! This isn't this isn't a Wuna story. Well, there was that flash video with Wuna in a box. <laughs> oh, uh... yes, and sadly, no one picked up poor Wuna. Which was silly. Everybody could see how cute she was. <laughs> and in this case, it's almost equally as silly, because by the time he gets to this box, he sees Dashy. a little filly inside. There we go. And it appears differently than, than, a, than an actual horse foal would appear. It appears differently from all that because it actually is cartoon-like. Because it is indeed Philly Rainbow Dash. No cutie mark. No ability to speak. So I'm going to assume it's like, have, have you ever seen that movie, um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? So is it like that? Mm. I'm going to assume it's like I'm that. I'm guessing that's, I'm, 
I'm guessing that's how it is because I got the I got the I got the feeling that this was pretty much just it was a cartoon Philly in a real life world. <laughs> kind of like the pictures. Yes, kind of like the pictures. Or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Or indeed Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Everyone should watch that movie. It's a classic. Uh, I mean, if you don't, if you guys don't mind, you should watch it. <laughs> now, having seen this Philly. Wondering who in the heck, how in the heck she got there, and who in the heck would pass by a Philly Rainbow Dash in a box, he decides that he'll take her home until she can get back to her own world. Well, that being said, time passes, cuteness abounds, Rainbow Dash begins to grow up, and he takes to calling her Dashy. Aww. He refrains from watching any My Little Pony Friendship is Magic for fear of what it might do to her to discover she comes from a fictional world. And, of course, he teaches her how to read. She somehow learns how to write, I believe. With her mouth. And, um, with her mouth, just like Apple Bloom yeah. does. And, uh... He teaches her how to fly. He teaches her how to fly. How he would be able to teach her well, how to fly is anyone's how guess. How he does it is he gets her to jump <laughs> off a tree over a patch of sand in case she fell. You know what? I don't... He's going for it. He's going for the do it or die way. I'm just... Well, I'm pretty certain that it birds, the way that birds fly works is they are pushed out of the nest once they get to a specific age, and they either fly or they die. That's not very nice. That, that's kind of terrible, actually. Well, such is nature. Such is nature. You realize nature is fierce and terrible yeah, when you actually I, learn some stuff yeah, about it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and that might not be all birds, but that's what I heard. Anyhow. Haven't you heard? The bird is the word. Oh, let's not go there. <laughs> mm. So, he teaches her how to fly, teaches her how to read, teaches her how to write, and she's growing up. Years pass. Eventually, she finds out about her origins. Oh, no. Of course, they have a fight. It leads to some harsh words, and she vanishes. Into the night. Well, he goes off looking for her. And he eventually finds her after basically saying he's sorry. So very sorry that he didn't tell her earlier. And they make up. And then she starts to watch Pony. And then she starts to watch Pony. <laughs> I believe it's mentioned that My Little Pony had stopped airing at this point And it had gone to its eighth season and was just doing reruns. That'd be pretty cool. Eight seasons of Pony. It would be pretty cool. Now, that being said, she starts to watch Pony. Some more years go by. He's taught her to the best of his ability, cared for her the best that he can, and things have been good. But we all know it wasn't meant to last. Hey, hey, no, 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 this is spoilers. We can't tell them. Shh, shh. Oh, spoilers? But if we were to spoil it, we would spoil the fact that I have to say... We would spoil the one biggest problem that I have with this fic. And that is the ending. I, I have to tell them how it ends, oh. because if I, if I don't, I can't, give, I can't give them my review. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Very well. Now... Go ahead. If you must. Those of you who want to read the story, read the story... Even if you've heard and are spoiled. It's very cute. You won't regret it. By the sto by, by we the storytellers. It's already been read. It's already been read by most of the fandom, I'm yes. pretty certain. But it is a very good story, and even if you have heard our review before reading it, you should read it anyways, because it's that good. Now, we all know it wasn't meant to last, so it's only a matter it was only a matter of time that the ponies from Equestria come to pick oh. her up. Well, the ponies... Well, it starts off with Rainbow Dash. I believe she's watching Pony on the TV. Or she's doing something. And what happens is Rob receives a knock on the door. He opens the door only to see Celestia at the door. He's surprised, of course, and then equally surprised to see the rest of the main six there. 
He knows what's coming. Dash has to go back to her world. Personally, you have to wonder whether or not they teleported be into our world someplace a little further away and they just walked around the streets looking for the house that Rainbow Dash was in. That would have been weird. <laughs> and all of the heads being turned going, what's going on? What but remember, this was a dying city. Oh wait, no, no. <laughs> By this point, the city is starting to thrive again. So it's not so much dying. He had to yes. move so that Dashy wouldn't be caught. Yes. But it's time to pick her up and take her back to Equestria. Do but she doesn't remember any of the ponies that come. She doesn't remember any of them. And at first, they're, they're eager to jump to the conclusion that the human had some fault in this matter. But he quickly points out that it was not his yes. fault. And what happens was... Um, Twilight screwed up a spell, of course, and sent Dash to the human world. But what happened was Dash got sent back as a filly. Fifteen years passed by in the human world, but only fifteen days passed by in Equestria. So now she has cumulative memories of the past fifteen years, and Princess Celestia informs them that it would be for the best that they that they bring her back to her world even if even if she wanted to stay there she doesn't belong no. there and of course as much as he wants to disagree good old rob doesn't doesn't well, doesn't tell her to stay because he knows that she doesn't belong don't question here in the Celestia's real world orders. and you don't question you don't question celestia but Celestia says that they have to give her back her old memories, and that means, for the sake of everyone, erasing the memories that she has of this world. That being said, Dashie takes some stuff from her room, and she, get, and she writes a letter, and she sets it on the table, and they cast the spell, and they remove her memories, and they all go back to their world after a heartfelt goodbye between... What has become a, fa a relationship between a father and a daughter. Now... It's just so beautiful. The end of the story is basically... Rob reads the letter from Dashie, and it's a heartfelt letter. We're not going to spoil any of its contents here. But it's a heartfelt letter, and basically he chooses to push forward with his life, even though Celestia's spell also erased all of the physical evidence of Dashie's presence. She no longer has the room. What was her room no longer exists. It's simply a bland office, and the rest of the physical presence is gone except for one photo album and the letter. And he decides for the both of them, it, it's, up, it's up to him to push onwards and make himself a happier life in the future. Uh, I'm okay, I swear. Now, this is the one thing that I have a problem with. And it's not that it's a bad ending. It's an acceptable ending. But acceptable isn't always good enough for a person like me. And that's just because I am the type of person who prefers the Hollywood ending because they even consider for a moment. They consider taking Rob back with them to Equestria. And there shouldn't have been any reason they couldn't have. All of his family, and he makes an express point in the story to basically say all of his family that he that, that ever really mattered are gone already. His parents dead, no siblings, all that sort of thing. Dashie's about to leave him. Dashie's about to leave him. Why stay in the human world when that option is available? And I and I I believe Celestia gave some kind of excuse, but in all honesty, I would prefer to see the Hollywood ending. I would prefer to see the ending where we get too. the storybook happy ending, where he gets to go to Equestria, they could turn him into a pony or something, and he could have a proper life with his daughter. Or at least exist there and still be able to see her. She, there's no reason why her memories should be completely erased. No reason why her memories of her time with him couldn't be shared in her head with the memories that she had of her past. Maybe the author just wants us all to cry. That may be true. I hope not, because that's not very nice. But I also wonder whether or not the author's intention was to create an ending that would be satisfactory 
and acceptable and less likely to piss off the people who get uppity about self-inserts or humans in Equestria or OC characters. Which, by the way, for those of you listening, you got to understand one major thing. And I've seen a lot of this. Oh no, he's going to rant. I'm not going to rant. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. Okay. But an OC character does not immediately constitute a Mary Sue or Gary Stu, whichever you want to refer to them as based on their gender. I'd also like to point out that author inserts fall into that same category of not equaling Mary Sue's or Gary Stu's. Exactly. It's all about the matter of writing. And if you want a good place where they define and categorize all of the different types of Sue's that are possible, go to tvtropes.com. Because that place has all the information you'll ever need to understand the truth. Be careful while you're there, guys. You'll, you could get lost there for a week. Yeah, it does have a tendency to suck people in. Yeah. But, but you know, use responsibly. But there is a large difference between OC characters, OC ponies, and self-inserts, and Mary Sue's. And I just want you guys to, that, that read fan fiction out there to understand this. That while, yes, a large majority of Mary Sue's that exists can be self-inserts or ROCs, not all of them are. And you have to be willing to have an open enough mind to take into context the writing of the story how the character is presented to the reader and the way that they are developed there are specific flaws in the creation of a mary sue character that result in a character that is bland boring and more often than not if you're going if you want to use this term overpowered or 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 why hello there superman or far too popular you know they're the superman <sighs> of the story they are the ubermensch the uber pony i could go out on a limb and say batman here but no i'm not going to uh, he has flaws on the he, he, it, he is <laughs> he is not a mary sue i believe at one it point on he ended up get, yeah he got his back broken and was out of commission for a long time yeah his back was broken by Bane in the yeah. series. But we're getting off topic. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but the point is, is give OC characters a chance. Even give self-inserts a chance if you're willing to go that far. Sure, you can take some other people's reviews or comments into consideration to see whether or not it's worth your time. But do not immediately brand an OC or a self-insert a Mary Sue just because they're an OC or a self-insert. Take the time to see if the writer has actually bothered to put some effort into their design. And at this point, I would like to point out that all your favorite background ponies, technically they're OCs. They have no characterization. Exactly. They're just what the fandom wants them to be. So... Yes. Frankly, I welcome OCs as they're not, there's not that many official characters to work on, especially in shipping fix. I welcome male OCs. Yes, thank you. The point of male OCs. I've seen so many people in the fandom get angry at male OCs that they think are just there to, to ship with the female characters. Well, you know what? Someone did the math, and I think it was some crazy number, like 1 in 12 or 1 in 20 of all ponies in Equestria, given what facts we, ha we know and we have seen and the background ponies we have been able to see, only like 1 in 20 of them are male. That means we need some more testosterone in there. That way that way we can at least compensate for the fact that I mean we have a large fandom full of male fans. We wouldn't it be nice for some of us males to be to have more characters to relate to even if they have to come from the fan? My OC is totally a male. <laughs> yeah, sure, Moon Knight. <laughs> <laughs> now even if that has to come from the fandom itself, I would love to see more male characters being created by the fandom and being put into stories. With that said, the character in this story, the main character, the protagonist, who we have declared to be called Rob, in honor of the writer, since he has no name in the story, uh, is a very well-written character. While you may think that he's a bit too broody when you start off with it, you got to think to the current time we live in and think on your own life. How often is it that if you're thinking in your own head 
that your current life is rather dull, that you seem to only wake up and go to work and then go home and then just do nothing until you go to sleep and then start the day, the whole process all over again. Sounds depressing. Those of us who have graduated from high school and are now fully-fledged adults hey. and have a few years on us, hey. no offense, Moonlight, <coughs> child, <coughs> Oh. Very wise for my year. <laughs> but those of us who have experienced the world beyond school, beyond living in our parents' home, know that the world can seem rather dull and bleak like that. So I find this character to be a very relatable one. And so, all in all, the pacing of the story was very good. There were very, very little... I, I honestly, I couldn't point any, any out in the story myself, but as far as grammar or spelling errors, none that I could point out readily to you. And um, it was a very gripping and emotionally moving tale with, while the ending, I only considered it an acceptable ending, it is it still acceptable. And it is a very, very moving story. If you're interested in, in, in reading a story that will pull at your heartstrings. Read it. This is one of the tales for you. It really is the kind of thing that, that you could have a heart of stone. And reading this story, you would feel some shade of emotion. You would feel something. It's that, it's that powerful. And in my opinion, it's worth every single star. I give it a full five-star rating. I give it a five-star raising as well. A rating, not raising. It, it's a six-star story on EQD as of right now, and it's got something like, what, 800-plus ratings right now. And uh, it's it's a really good story. I gave it a perfect score. The only thing that I would have liked to see in this story that I didn't get was 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 the best ending, you know. I would, I would, have, I would have liked to see Rob go to the pony world to live his life in a brighter, more cheerful, and, and, and happier society. I don't think I would have cried if that was the ending. Because while that might not have made me cry, it would have satisfied me and made me really happy. It would have given me the warm and fuzzies. And oh, the warm and fuzzies. That just might be because I'm the type of guy who doesn't mind that sort of wish fulfillment ending, that sort of ending where it's the kind of thing you would see in a Hollywood film. But that's because when I read something, I, I prefer to read something that's going to leave me happy at the end. And this one certainly moved me, and the emotional moving was very, very, very welcome. But I cried, man! This, this, this story, it's... Wait, you cried? <laughs> very softly. Very soft. I see. So, there, so not as much as I did. You guys, you guys, you guys were watching me because I was reading this story on the tiny chat, and I was I, taking very, very I wasn't good watching pains. You, at the time. you weren't watching me at the time, but when, no, I must have been asleep. When we were all on tiny chat and video streaming, uh, for uh, for every free radio, we, I was reading this at the same time, and I, I had to take great pains to keep my composure. Oh, wow. And uh, I, I'm very, I'm very proud that I seem to have pulled it off. That's very nice. But yeah, it was a very moving story, very moving, perfect score. I commend Rob Kran or however you want to pronounce that, Rob Kran fifty three, the author of the story. I look forward to reading more from that author actually and i do i look forward to reading more as well and maybe he could uh maybe if he actually listens to uh listens to any of our podcasts or mini casts and if he hears if he hears this review he can he can write a better ending for me <laughs> <laughs> no, that's going a bit too far maybe maybe i love the story the way it is and with that i think we should end this first mini cast Indeed. Um, uh, word to our viewers, this minicast is being released a bit early, but the, it shall happen on a weekly basis, uh, usually on Fridays, and we won't normally review one-shots, we will review longer fix since we have more time for this one, but we had a bit of a deadline to make, and I've been dying to review this. 
Yes, as have I, actually. Honestly, I've been begging to review it ever since I read it. <laughs> ever since yes. Outcast suggested it to me. Yes. yes, I did just give a shout out to you. Big shout out to happy. Outcast. Big shout out to Outcast, who suggested it to Moonlight, who then suggested it to me. Um, yeah, this this was a great story. Um, you'll be you'll be able to look forward to more of these mini casts by us. We'll take the longer periods of time that we're allowed in our mini casts to go through the more epic sized fanfics and the ones that are the ones that are uh, ongoing. Not past sins. We have plans for that. Oh yes, past <sighs> sins. We're coming for you. We're holding a. De- we're going to be holding a debate sometime in the future. The date is not set, but we are going to hold a debate. The Ever Free Radio Past Sins Great Debate Fanfic Review Session, and we will have people on either side, whether they support it or whether they flame it, and we will put out all of the goods, the pros, the cons, the bads, and we will tear into that thing and analyze it down to its very bones. Lord, that was terrible. Um, we just need to get everyone else to read it. <laughs> Some of us haven't yet. Yes. So, once that is done, once that is done, you can expect that in the future, and it'll probably be a nice, sizable review. So, that being said, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. This has been Fanfic Review Corner. I'm Brush and Bones. I'm Moonlight, and we'll see you next time. See you next time, everyone. <laughs>